Splice, it looked like SK may have taken game four, but Splice come a-knocking. They sweep SK under the map, and they prove that they belong amongst the best teams in the LEC. FlyQuest will find their fight. All that is golden will not glitter today, and FlyQuest will defeat the Golden Guardians in game five. Ah, there's no better time of the year than League of Legends playoffs. I'm Lisa Duan, and this is Matt Hempstead. And today on Esports in 30, we're going to break down all of the League of Legends playoffs action. Matt, before we get analytical, though, yes. what went down this weekend? There's a bit of everything. I mean, in the playoffs, there's going to be those dominant sweeps. There's going to mm -hmm. be some of the, you know, more one-sided things. And then you have the amazing best of fives that are back and forth. And you have to look at the draft and change everything, change your game plan. And the stress just gets... Really intense. And we saw it in FlyQuest versus Golden Guardians. They're also, I mean, Fnatic didn't really have much of an issue, and that series was over before you knew it. Yeah. So it's got a bit of everything, and that's what you're really looking for in the playoffs. You want to see how teams adapt, what teams are just going to soar through the competition, mm -hmm. and we've got a bit of everything. Oof, that's exciting. All right, so first up on the agenda, we're going to dive deep into the LEC. For those of you who have missed it, don't sweat it. Let's get you all caught up with these highlights. Just nukes it. Yeah, trying to extend that trade. Uses the cutlass for the slow. A few more autos. Wants to get forward. Oh, buying a bit more time. But playing that one. So oh, well. No, oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, we're trying to find the engage. Jack Tool here for the fall. They have to be careful, though. Unbreakable already used. The total off to the side. Nemesis looking for the re-engage. They're now backing off. Whipple has used the ultimate. Ultimate now coming in the corner. That's going to be too quick. Kalos Hillisang going to keep the ball rolling. Double dropping for Broxa. They want one more. Hillisang flashing forward. Looking for that auto. Will not be able to grab it. But the ultimate is there from Nemesis. The engage is clean. But Fnatic, they are simply too far ahead in this game. They set their sights on the Nexus and they're going to take game one. This is real bad for Vitality. Over. Reckless on the way off. Paul's going to take a little bit of CC and Kais is going to come flying in. And there it is. Reckless on cleanup duty. Tower, this is a very brief window of time where Vitality have control over the map because of the mistake. Now, no Cabo! Oh! So they're all immediately Cabo trying to leap in. Bronx not going to get taken down though. Cabo goes cold but in the middle of the team there's no alternate available. He's just going to get taken out. Meanwhile on the back side until it gets one going to try to find two but the stopwatch is there for Blippo. Fnatic absolutely dominating across both of these games. They are one win away from taking the series. Kale now coming down. Ultimate could just be used on Blippa to keep him alive, and it will be. Kabochar now going to find himself in trouble. The stacks are going to come in for the Kale. Once he gets those flame waves, it's going to be so much harder. You can see Mowgli taking so much damage. And oh my, well, look, look, he's literally on the Nexus. 1v3, he does not care. Oh, comes in, he's just going to keep, keep it going. Does he get the chance to use the what? ultimate as well? He does, that's the double kill. Wants a few more. They're walking right into the fountain. They just keep feeding him. That's the Quadra. Is he going to get the Penta? <laughs> The series is over. And a reminder to all of Europe, Fnatic did not come into this split to compete. They came to dominate. Ford stacking now. Oh my god. Oh, Judge second. just melts it underneath the tower. Well, it gets the 1v1. Here now coming in from the side. Oh, this is huge! Yes. Look at the damage! Oh. And already Humanoid is dead! While well, they're coming in with the Onslaught of Shadows, they'll get two is the shutdown for Perian! And now Xerxes caught out, or Scaven fighting some middle towards the top side. Xerxes gonna fall as well, it's another shutdown for SK! They're gonna take four for nothing! And in a game of inches, it looks like SK are the ones to strike first. The shutdown comes out from Crowdshot, and they were an inch away from losing, but SK take game one. They're on to Perian, but he shuffles them back with the soldiers. Organic destruction from Kobe as they take down one, and they're just gonna clean them all up. Splice, rout, SK. SK had one shot, and they missed it by a mile, and Splice take them all out. Kobe, <laughs> oh, 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 he's doing Infinity it! Infinity Edge does all the work. Kobe almost him. dies. Him, there coward. we go. He void rushes <laughs> in, but the stand United is too much. <laughs> no scam and very low. You can see Humanoid taking away on the tormented soil. Kobe trying to get on towards that front line. Gets the shut down onto Perian. Now he's up crouch on the stand United. It's enough. We're gonna keep him alive. He gets away from the back of the fight and dreams goes down as well. It's a double kill for Kobe. Splice. It looked like SK may have taken game four, but Splice come a-knocking. They sweep SK under the map, and they prove that they belong amongst the best teams in the LEC. Fnatic and Splice won their respective series, and they're moving on in the LEC playoffs. To break down those matchups, we've got Nico the Pico joining us. How's it going? Things are good. Can't That's complain at all. That's awesome. Now let's start with that very dominant showing from Fnatic over Vitality. How were they able to absolutely dominate Vitality and sweep the series? Wait, did Vitality actually play? Oh, 
Oh, like, man. Oh, God. Too savage. I personally wish that Misfits was a team that actually met Fnatic here. I think that that would have been a way greater series, especially with the players that Misfits have and a lot of experience and, and people who actually show up in playoffs like Soa, it's like forbidden. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like Vitality just weren't ready. And uh, you saw the, dif the difference in discipline that Fnatic has. And when they're drafting fully for the scaling and always having outscaling compositions, putting a lot of pressure on Vitality, who were drafting very heavily on the early game, especially for the first match, they just weren't able to actually get enough of a lead to actually snowball off of it. And the discipline on Fnatic's side just shone through the entire series. And I felt like after the first match, and especially when they gave Karthus again for game number two, and Fnatic wins two in a row, Fnatic can bring down their shoulders and just take it out cleanly. And they just held the discipline throughout the third game as well, and it was just a clean sweep. Mm -hmm. I mean, going into the series, I actually thought Vitality's game one draft was pretty decent, but then you go into the game and you see all these mistakes that Vitality's making, like mm -hmm. overdiving Whippo time after time, and just being over aggressive when the bot lane knows that the enemy team is close by doing the dragon. So, I mean, a, a lot of it was Vitality, uh, Fnatic played really well, but also Vitality just, making they mistakes. looked absolutely, uh, you know, sloppy, making mistakes everywhere. Do you think that this game was like Fnatic actually playing really well, or was it just Vitality's uh, faltering and then Fnatic took over. If you look again at the draft in game one, you will see that Vitality is completely all inning their early game. Mm -hmm. yes. So if they do not win the early game really, really, really hard and secure dragons and secure heralds and get all the auditors like in 15 minutes, the game is just going to be over. Mm -hmm. And the Fnatic ball lane and the vision control that Fnatic put out on the lower half of the map was so good that it was really hard for Vitality to find entrances. So the only actual open spot for them to do stuff was on Wipo. And, you know, it doesn't even matter. Even if they kill him every single time they dive him, if they're not able to turn it into dragons, if they're not able to turn it into uh, tier one towers, then they're not going to be able to do anything. And they just needed to snowball so incredibly hard. And Fnatic knew that. So Fnatic were just playing safely. Like, Vitality needs to snowball. Let's not give them the snowball. Let's play defensively. Let's put up division control and let's play disciplined. This makes me wonder, though, because, like, Vita choosing to play that way means that Vitality don't have, I guess, they're not strong in the late game, or they feel like they can't beat Fnatic in the late game, yeah. which is why they went all in on their early game. But is that the right way to approach, you know, a series? that Fnatic are known for, you know, being calm and keeping their cool for the late game. So, like, what, in, what rationale went behind that strategy, you know? Maybe calling out the coach on Vitality. Why this strategy? Why this plan? Um, I think normally when you see playoff matches, mm -hmm. the first match of playoff matches is usually really, really, really defensive, really slow, and it's like a slow burner game. I think that uh, Yamada Kamen and uh, Vitality, they just wanted to change things up and actually go ham from the first game and show that they have no fear and they're not going to let go and they're just going to keep going at it. Um, I think Fnatic were just too disciplined. Like maybe if they were facing a weaker team, it would have worked. Maybe they expected Fnatic to come in weaker. But Fnatic looked prepared, they looked ready, and they looked serious. And yeah, I think I know who's going to go to finals, to put it like that. Ooh. Yeah, it definitely looks like Fnatic's uh, rolling pretty well. One thing I want to ask you is, I mean, Nemesis, he took over for Fnatic at the beginning of the split, took over from Caps. And I think he's finally, well, not finally, but about halfway through the split, he started to really click with the team. And then you saw in the game three with his Kale, he absolutely took over. So now that Nemesis is fully engaged into what Fnatic is doing, uh, how, how much do you think they've improved and how dangerous do you think they are going forward here? I think that when you get a player like Nemesis into your team who's uh, not as vocal as Caps was, especially in the end, obviously there's a transition period for the team to actually get familiar with this new player and get into how the communication needs to be and everybody to know their roles and you're sort of relearning the game together. Obviously, we saw the Fnatic was struggling in the first half of the split where the early game was just atrocious. They were able to solve their problems. They seemed like they were able to sort of find a synergy again and, and find the communication flow that they needed. And they were able to unlock the potential of Nemesis. They took him away from the defensive uh, sort of uh, long range pokey mage mid laners and put him more on what is Nemesis's play style to be up in people's faces. Mm -hmm. And we're able to actually play around with him. And I think it's working and we can see that. Well, we'll see if Fnatic can be challenged in the next stage of playoffs. But let's move on over to the other series with Splice and SK Gaming. So Splice took the series three games to one. What did they do to knock off Self Made and the streaking or the streak that SK Gaming had? Yeah, so SK is pretty much the self-made show. <laughs> like, 
Uh, yep. Yep. If he if he doesn't get a good game, if he doesn't get ahead, if he's not able to snowball people within the 10 first minutes of the game, SK doesn't look so impressive. But when he's actually able to take control over the early game and he's able to snowball whatever laner he wants and he's able to control the enemy jungler, like he knows how to play the game and he's incredibly good. Uh, I think we saw in game one and game four was when uh, SK had the best games in the series. And a big part of this is uh, Self-Made Man actually having the stronger jungler matchup for the early game and them also having Wurlub on a champion that can actually play aggressive on the top side. I think that the issue that SK ran into for game two and game three is that they tried to put uh, Wurlub in different scenarios where he wasn't really able to get utilized and especially in game two where they put him on the karma like I, I would never imagine him just popping off on a karma that just doesn't make sense to me <laughs> so uh i think after game one they got a bit cocky with their draft and it hurt them and then they were not really sure for game three and then they found themselves for game four but it was too late speaking of cocky in game four self-made actually built infinity edge on <laughs> rexi which is pretty crazy i mean he was a little bit ahead but i wouldn't say he was that far ahead to actually warrant going that full offensive item. Do you think that that actually backfired in game four and kind of cost him a little bit? I know he almost solo killed Kabe there, but then he overdived and got killed. Mm. So not the best. Do you think that that build path was actually, uh, you know, detrimental to SK Gaming in game four? Uh, I'm not going to say that his build path actually lost him the game. Right. But if you look at the last team fight that actually ends the game where he gets caught off, and he just dies within the millisecond and then they yeah. end up losing the entire game when they have five dragons and the game should be over. Yeah. You know, this would not happen if you actually build serious. And that is the slap in the face and he's gonna learn from this. You know, like this is his first playoff in LEC or LCS or, or this level of play. I, I think he, he felt like the game was already won. They had five dragons, like the game was going smooth. So, he felt like he could get away with it, but mm. in the end, it actually slapped him in the face, and uh, he had to learn it the hard way. So, like, as a coach, you know, when your player kind of takes the liberty to do something like that, maybe they felt like this was needed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's their own, their own discretion. But as a coach, how do you, like, kind of talk to a player <laughs> like that? Like, what would you respond? What would be your response to a player choosing to do that? I, I think honestly, after that game, when they bring <laughs> Splice to four games and they're actually playing equal in two other games, and you have uh, so amateur players, you actually just got to be happy with them. And and I'm sure he's killing himself over it for actually doing it, especially with how the game ended. You don't need to bring anything more on his head. You know, like SK actually performed out of their mind this split, mm -hmm. and they overperformed everybody's expectations. They would never be there if it wasn't for self-made man. So I don't think, I, I wouldn't try to bring him down for him making a bad item choice in the final game when it seems like they have everything in the box. Like that is a lesson he will learn and he will never do it again. And he played wonderfully this entire split. I think they put up a good showing way better than Vitality, at least. That's fair, that's fair. I mean, no doubt he's still rookie of the split no matter what. And again, yeah. he kind of carried SK through a lot of this split and even into the playoffs. It was actually not a super one-sided series. And mm -hmm. I think for Splice, uh, Kabe was really the backbone mm. in this series. Yes. I mean, time after time, you know, it went to the late game and he was that crutch that kind of stood up and won those team fights. So just talk about how crucial Kabe is. Obviously, it was the first uh, pro AD carry this season for the LEC. Um, yep. So what does he do just to, even if Splice screws up an early game, you still have Kabe there to rely on so if trusty. it goes late. He is. <laughs> yes, trusty is, is how I see Kabe as well. Like he's always been consistent. Like no matter when, like any time in his career, you go and look at him, he's always consistent. Like he will always bring the damage. He will always position good. He's always disciplined. He's just always reliable. And having reliability in, in him means that you're able to play mid side, you're able to play top side, and he's still gonna be reliable. You don't need to put all your eggs in the copy basket in order for him to carry. He's gonna be able to take care of himself. Mm -hmm. And I think that for this series, that was actually a part of the issue for, for SK's draft because uh, they were actually trying to put a lot of priority towards the bottom half of the map to sort of deal with the copy, but you know, Kabi's gonna be fine regardless. Yeah, why but, attack so, a consistent player, right? Yes, if I was SK in this series, uh, like maybe it's hindsight, but 
I would have rather put all my eggs in the self-made man basket and actually try to snowball through the top side where Werlib and put Werlib on carries. You saw when he was on Hecarim, like he's actually getting into the back line, he's doing the stuff. So if you can get the duo Werlib and, and self-made man in good positions, I think that would have given them a way better opportunity to actually do something in this series. And we did see that when they actually had those champions. Mm, well, there's a lot for them as a team to look back at Absolutely. and hopefully improve for next time. Now let's look forward to next weekend because Fnatic and Splice are facing off. Fnatic did say that they would have chosen to play Splice if they could have, yep. so it's happening. So do you think Splice has a chance against Fnatic? Uh. Ah, and Matt's is like, eh. Nico, you first? What are you thinking? Okay, if the Fnatic shows uh, it's the same that was showing in the first half of the split, then sure. If it's the same Fnatic from the second half of the split and from this uh, playoff matchup versus Vitality, I just don't see it. Maybe they can get a game. Like, if all the stars align, then maybe they can get two. <laughs> I just don't see them winning the series. Like, the shining point of Splice has been Kabi, but Reckless <laughs> is better than Kabi in every possible way, I would say, <laughs> especially Aww. right now. So, so I, I'm i sorry, but I, I, I just think Fnatic will, will take it. It might be rough, but they will come out ahead in the end and they're going to go to finals, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I would agree. I think, yeah. like, Splice's main win condition is Kabi in the late game, mm -hmm. but Fnatic has Reckless in the late game, so yeah. it just matches up evenly, and then Fnatic's a, a stronger team we across the map. Is like so. the Fnatic playoff buff is still a real thing? Like, do people, they seem to always pick themselves up in time for when it matters. I don't know. I mean, a, a few splits now in a row, they've kind of started off rough, and then they find themselves, exactly. and it, it just transcends into playoffs. So right now, I would say they're pretty dangerous. I don't know about you, Nico. Mm. Yeah, I, I think uh, players like Soaz, players like Reckless, mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> their regular season is not the most important thing in their lives. As long as they just make it to playoffs, they are happy. Because in playoffs, when they get the weeks to prepare into playoffs and they actually get into the best of five series once again, mm -hmm. like that is where these players thrive. That is what they live for. That is the feeling they want to have. Like they want to lose a game in a series and actually feel like the pressure is on. Because when you're playing best of ones or best of twos in the regular right. season, you know, the pressure is not really on. You don't feel it so much. Like, obviously, they felt it at the one point where they had to win the games in order to make playoffs. But it's not the same of being in a best of five and either you proceed or you just fall out of playoffs. And I think that these experienced, more veteran players are unlocked in playoffs just because of the pressure that comes with it. And that's where they thrive. That's an interesting thing that you bring up. It's like there's some players that play just better under more pressure. Yep. So I'm curious, yes. both of you guys. So if you had to choose a player from the LEC that is best under the most pressure, who would be that player? We'll let Nico go first. Nico, <laughs> you need time to think. That's right. <laughs> I best. would say Soas. Like so all, of all time, yeah, of especially all time. if we, well, Let's look at LEC and Europe, right? Yes. If you look at Europe of all time, like Soas is the guy who consistently always comes through in the clutch situations. He's always there. He's always a leader. Like he always performs good when it really matters, mm -hmm. especially in playoffs. Especially in playoffs. I mean, it has to be someone on Fnatic, right? Whether it's whether it's a reckless or you can throw away back to when Froggen was still Old in the uh, in Europe. Yeah. Not on Fnatic, but in the oh, Alliance yeah, days. Alliance, yeah. The Any shoe. one of those guys. The OGs, they just somehow, the yeah. they learn they learned to yeah. do it. They learn to do it. All right, uh, let's move on to the other match that's coming up. It's the battle of first and second. So G2 is going against Origin. How do you see this one playing out? The hypest matchup that we're going <laughs> to get before the finals. I do think that G2 was slacking off in the end of the season, but they're going to pick it up for the playoffs for sure, and they're going to take it more serious. They also have experienced players, so go back to what we talked about with Reckless and Soas. Mm -hmm. But I think that... This series is going to be incredibly explosive. I do think that G2 is going to get out on top in the end, Ooh. meaning that Origin loses. And I think that G2 is going to meet Fnatic in the finals in the end. Oh. Rip Origin. Wow. Well, at least they put up a fight. That's the hope, right? That we're They're going to They're going to make this. Rift Rivals. There you go. Yay! A very, A very <laughs> prestigious tournament. That's right. Yay! <laughs> well, okay, well, we're going to hold you to those predictions because we're very serious about do. those. That's right. Everyone gets shamed on Twitter if they we, get predictions We shame people wrong, on Twitter. So that's important. All right. Nico, thank you so much for your time and knowledge, and thank you for breaking down the LEC playoffs with us. My pleasure.
All right, now that we've got LEC covered, it's time to hit up the LCS. But before we chat about it, let's get you caught up with some highlights. Belter, flying quest trying to fight for it. They're looking to go in. Ole's able to find a taunt onto two. JJ gonna be taken very low. Turtle nearly kill out. First and down, taken out of the picture, and that's a double kill over to Deathly. Glacial Fissure finally gonna find the life form disintegration. Ray interrupts it. Can Turtle find some sort of an outplay here? No, sir! He'll be taken out, but at least there's a couple down on the side of Golden Guardians now. It will not be enough. FlyQuest retreats. The Fountain's their only salvation, but they will not find it today. Golden Guardians from back-to-back 10th, -back now one game away from semi-finals here. Here comes the fight. It's going to be FlyQuest going in. Froggen's in some trouble having to try to get himself away from this one. 200 HP remaining. Santorin already grabbing the kill, and Golden Guardians on the left, left, right, and center. Definitely nearly taken down. Requiem coming out. Double kill over to P.O.B. P.O.B. trying to make the dive happen now onto the back line. Froggen trying to get himself away. Poe Belter still going to be wreaking some havoc. Hauntzer's able to find the kill onto Poe Belter, but can he get himself away? Ole's going to be dying next. Hauntzer goes into the resurrection. Definitely looking to find some auto attacks left, right, and center, but he's going to be taken down. Turtle with a double kill. Make it into it. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome you to game five. Right. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to go for the ward off, but contracts may just get exploded. TP coming in. Contracts is destroyed. Lamp's respite will keep them alive, but here comes FlyQuest. Hauntzer's trying to hobble away. Frog is the last man standing. Turtle smells blood in the water. Lamb's respite keeps Golden Guardians alive. Vanguard's edge here into the middle. They're able to find contract. They're able to find Frog. And everybody's going to be dropping here now. FlyQuest will find their fight. All that is golden will not glitter today. And FlyQuest will defeat the Golden Guardians in game five. Watch comes in, Broken Blade is low, Solo can revive. He's gonna find both revives here, but already Jarvan is dead. One for zero in favor of Echo Fox, and push back TSM. He's sleeping, oh! the double kill! The center of the back line, he flashes in. Can't get the kill just yet, Stopwatch burn. Now look at Acadian, look at the back line's vent. Chased by a Solo, Solo gets one, looks for Acadian. They find the second, they've completely crushed the back line. Who gets up Echo Fox? We've got more games to see, but game one goes to the underdogs. The play finds the over into the cleanse flash knock and they've got the burst damage. Two games oh. in a row. First blood to TSM. One for zero in that fight. Now looking for the re-engage in the front line towards the Braun onto that shield. Exhaust runs Ven. Doug is still chase Apollo. Rooted in place. Gets oh. the rend. When it resets. Oh, a oh. He's very, very low and asleep. They're gonna find the burst. Two kills from Bjergsen. The Drake traded back, but it's still plus one kill. And they're finding even more. He is running for the hills, trying to stay alive. Look for the next play. Big damage out of Bjergsen. He's got a flash. He can burn. This could be the chase down. He's got Phoenix, and they're gonna get Rush as well. Solo over the wall trying to run, but they can still get more. Apollo is trying to get away. Oh! Bjergsen finds the third. They're gonna find number two. Echo Fox must do something, or they will lose their base. But Bjergsen kites back. They find the flash. Pulverize Phoenix as well. They don't get him just yet. But TSM, you hear it from the crowd. They have won, and they're into the semifinals. All right, so the first playoff series was FlyQuest versus the Golden Guardians. This one went the distance, but eventually FlyQuest came out on top. So what did FlyQuest do to get that series? This was like the playoff series that no one knew they wanted until it kind of <laughs> happened, but okay. it, it actually turned out to be kind of interesting, and especially just looking at like the draft and how the meta evolved just in this series alone. It was actually pretty interesting. I mean, we started off, everyone's eyes always on Froggen, right? And right away he plays Karthus mid. They get that first game victory, and all, all of a sudden you're like, oh, here we go. It's the Froggen show. But then FlyQuest starts to adapt, and uh, Froggen goes on to like Lissandra, which is not a Frog and champion, mm -hmm. and FlyQuest battles back, and eventually in game five, it's Poe Belter, the opposing mid laner, who kind of takes over, pops off on Zoe, and FlyQuest moves on in a pretty crazy back and forth game five, uh, and just a series overall. So FlyQuest moving on, but it was really close, and it was Poe po Belter who kind of shone over Froggen, which is not exactly who people were Were you surprised by this result, though? Like, a little bit. Surprising? I thought Golden Guardians would win after how they finished the split and just all the things that they can kind of throw at an enemy team just based on Froggen's pocket picks alone, whether it's a Nivea, which he didn't pull out, but we saw Velkaz and Karthus. So I thought there was a lot of things that they could throw at an enemy that FlyQuest wouldn't expect, mm -hmm. um, but they were able to barely hold on and adapt just enough to move on to face Team Liquid. Well, this is a lesson right there. You can't just have one player be the main focus and all Crazy, those pocket right? picks, right? Yeah. But all right, let's move on to the other series because that was exciting too. TSM versus Echo Fox. Now TSM were heavy favorites, and after dropping game one, 
they won the next three. So let's start with that first game. How did yeah. Echo Fox take that first game, and then how did TSM go on to adapt? Well, they actually had a really good early game where Rush was going up to help out Solo in the top lane, but Rush also had a lot of issues on Kindred. He uh, ulted late one time, which resulted in Solo dying. He also jumped out of his ultimate so that he himself died. But despite that, they held on just with like solid team fighting and good Baron play, which ended them that game one win. But after that, Rush went on to Jarvan, a character who he won a lot of games with going down the stretch with Echo Fox, mm -hmm. and he lost all of them. And he was just making these engages and missing EQs, and he got, got a lot of flack for it. But on the other end, Akkadian was yes. stellar, on and point. the draft was just like, let's give him Rek'Sai. He was very aggressive, got first bloods for TSM, and the early game was enough to be like, you know what, Echo Fox, your early game is not good enough to hold up to ours. We're just going to take these early leads and carry it over into pretty easy victories. You know, I feel bad, though. I don't think we should be too hard on, like, Rush, because when a player feels so much pressure yeah. to carry their team, this is what happens. Mistakes happen. And, we, and this is like the Hooney, you know, complex all over again. It's oh, like no. they feel this pressure. And so let's, let's not be too mean on Rush. But, you know, they yeah. have a lot to work on for next season. And hopefully they can do that. I think it was just enough for them to make it into the playoffs yes. after the rough start they had. Rush coming back after that little hiatus comes back in week eight. They win four in a row. They mm -hmm. make playoffs. And TSM, let's be honest, they're huge favorites over Echo Fox. So even them just getting that far is impressive. That's true. So now let's look forward to the upcoming matches because there's some really good ones. So some. Team Liquid, they chose FlyQuest. Shocker. Shocker as who they want to play. So what do you think about that matchup? Yeah, not Shocker. That was heavy sarcasm <laughs> uh, treatment. But I mean, Sorry, obviously, no. if you're going to choose TSM or FlyQuest, you're going to go for FlyQuest. Yeah. Uh, I mean, TSM's, or sorry, Team Liquid's owner, Steve, said on Twitter, we're going to pick TSM. Guess what? They did not pick this. <laughs> a troll. Uh, it was a troll, <laughs> and obviously it's the correct thing to do because FlyQuest is definitely a weaker team. They went five games against Golden Guardians. I think we can all say that Team Liquid is a stronger team than the mm -hmm. Golden Guardians. Um, so if you get pushed to your limits by them, then it's going to be uh, pretty rough going against the number one team in the league. Obviously, the only concern is Team Liquid's end of the split where they lost a bunch of games. Didn't is they lose to gonna... FlyQuest? They did lose to FlyQuest yeah. in that, that <clears throat> uh, slurp flurry of losses yeah. um, so we're gonna <laughs> slurry. that's right I slurred my words into uh, so we'll see if that has any effect I don't think it will I'm sure team liquid after a week off and a bunch of practice is gonna be totally fine they've been scrimming against cloud nine a lot this week mm. and that's a pretty good uh, competition to practice against so pretty sure it's gonna be a pretty clean sledding for okay. for team liquid yeah you bring cloud nine up hopefully the practice works because they're going up against TSM so there's that rivalry with TSM and cloud nine mm -hmm. and it's coming back so who do you think is the favorite for this matchup this one is very hard to predict I mean Ooh. TSM has won six straight regular season games into that playoff series against Echo Fox mm -hmm. and they look pretty convincing after dropping the first game which even arguably they you could have said they win that series too um, so I think that it's TSM in five, um, but it's going to be really tight. And obviously Cloud9's got a lot of veterans on this team. Every year they go into playoffs as not the top favorites, but they're right underneath. And then they, they show you that th they got what it takes, right? But TSM right now, I just really like what they're doing in the early game. Sometimes Ven looks like OG Niels. I mean, you saw on his, his Kalista in game two, yeah. he was like popping off again, and he's kind of gone back into form. And everything just makes sense with the way they're playing right now. Bjergsen, obviously the man in the mid lane, mm -hmm. holding his own. Criticism has kind of evaporated, and Akkadian looks like he's fitting in with this team. So if they can get the early game going, I think that TSM can topple Cloud9, which is probably going to be considered an upset. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say TSM in five. All right. Remember, I'm going to hold you to these yes, as well. That's right. I'm going to shame you if you're wrong. Yeah, and so <laughs> we do have to do one more thing. We have to pick the player of the week. So who is your choice? I think it'd be a little too easy just to give it to someone from TSM. And also, I don't know who I would choose out of that team because they all <laughs> had a pretty good damn week, right? So I'm going to go with uh, Poe Belter from FlyQuest after that amazing Game 5 victory over Golden Guardians. I mean, he came up absolutely huge in Game 5, picking up that Zoe, and he was just... Chasing after opponents through the jungle, landing all of his skill shots, bursting out his opponents, and it was an absolutely disgusting <laughs> performance that almost single-handedly carried them uh, into the semifinals. Also in game two on his Swain, he was just landing all of his abilities, and in a couple of these games, he was the main source of damage and uh, one of the guys who just absolutely carried FlyQuest to the next round. And he's not normally the guy in past teams who have been you know, he's not the star of the show normally. He's a supportive player for a double lift in the Team Liquid days or the CLG days. Right. But now on FlyQuest, along with Wild Turtle, he's the main carry, and he came up absolutely massive, and now they're moving on to the semifinals. So big ups to Pobalter after his huge performance. Oh, well, we'll see if he can actually step up in the next right. 
playoff series. Well, next week, there is no more shortage of awesome matchups to talk about, so make sure you keep your eyes on the LCS and LEC. Now tomorrow, AJ and Ron will take over Esports in 30 to talk about the Overwatch League, but until then, make sure you check us out on our socials at Squad State, and we will see you tomorrow.